Welcome to another session on S4. Uh, we're going to concentrate a little bit more on some stock movements. Uh, a lot of people ask me to see uh, more of the system and how it works. So I'm going to run MRP and show some inventory bits and pieces. So to get us started, um, I'm going to do a little bit of a, uh, an intro. Obviously, we've talked before about S4, what it is, what does it do, uh, blending everything together. But let's talk quickly about the, the new user interface. Obviously, things are a little different than they used to be. The grey screens before lots of transactions, got to remember lots of codes and things, whereas now we can follow processes obviously in the system. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a, an example of a hospital and the hospital site has a plant number of 1720 and they want some new green um, latex free gloves. So what they're going to do is that demand is going to come in. Now that demand coming into that hospital could come in a number of ways. It could come from purchase requisitions being raised. It could come from a planning system such as uh, IBP pushing down uh, requirements, or it could just come from any other system where we've actually put in the, the expected demand. So I'm going to do that first of all. I'm then going to show um, how that demand gets pushed through to a central purchasing plant, plant number 1710. And running MRP is going to generate uh, purchase orders across from here, and of course uh, the transfer orders to fulfil that. I'm also going to show running MRP in site 1720 first of all, just to show the the requirements turning into um, purchase requisitions. So it's going to be a few things going on. First thing we're going to do is we're going to run. Excuse me, let's put it right back. We're going to run uh, MRP in the hospital site to show the demand in terms of purchase requisitions. Then we're going to show the um, MRP running from plant 1710, that's going to generate the purchase order out to the vendor and generate a transfer order to move the stock across. Uh, and then obviously we're going to do the goods receipt of that stock from the, from the purchase order from the vendor, the goods issue of that, and then the goods receipt coming to the hospital site itself. And of course in the between I'll show that being in transit. Uh, last little thing I'm going to do is to show the consumption against the cost center for um, the goods um, actually at the hospital site. In this case, I'm going to scrap them, but um, obviously we could do a bunch of different things. So let's uh, take a look at that to start off with. Let's go into um, what we might look at as a, a procurement overview page. And a procurement overview page will show me everything about what I've been doing in terms of procurement, uh, how my supply is performing, where are my uh, purchase acquisitions uh, coming from, what type are they, so on and so forth. And again, if I want to, I could uh, drill down to different plants, purchasing orgs and all those kind of things. So this is my, my main central um, purchasing location, 1710. So I can look at all my stuff here. I can monitor my contracts and all those types of things very nicely from here. But let's, um, let's take this into the, the stock side of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some planned independent requirements to start off with. Now, as I mentioned, these planned independent requirements could come from uh, a planning system, such as uh, IBP. Uh, they could come from a number of different locations. So let me just put in here, my, that's my green latex gloves. I should have probably just searched by green latex, might have been a bit easier. And uh, my plant that I want to create these planned independent requirements on is 1720, that's correct. That's a hospital plant, and I'm going to put them in a daily bucket. So let me uh, show some of that happening. So today's the, the sixth. I'm going to put them, I'm going to put, uh, let's do seven. So I want seven today. All good. I can save that planned and employment requirement. Of course, you could uh, do this over time. You can do it by lots and lots of materials and all that kind of stuff. This is just a very basic example. So we'll save that. And what this is going to do is if I come back to my home page, and I probably could have shown this before I put the demand in, but um, if I go to my material coverage here, I've just filtered this down to the two sites for the uh, for the same material, as you can see here, and you'll see that because 1720 has uh, some demand now against it, we've got a, a big red uh, analytics telling me that um, I've got a bit of a stock shortfall, so seven pieces, obviously, on that day, so there's a bit of an issue there. So I need to fix that. So let me um, go into here and take a look at that in more detail. And what I can do is obviously I can see this requirement for the seven, and we haven't got any stock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start MRP to try and fix the issue. So I'm going to run MRP, 
And what MRP is going to do is essentially generate a purchase requisition for me for that requirement. So hopefully this should uh, move pretty quickly. There we go. So now I've got a purchase requisition um, saying, hey, I need some stock. Uh, that's, that's all great. But if I go back to my stock coverage, what's interesting here is we'll start to see that the big red line for 1720 uh, has now just changed to basically a shortfall uh, for, for one day, whereas I now have a bigger issue sitting in 1710 because um, I don't have any stock to fulfill the other plant. So let's run MRP for that location and try and fix that issue. So this is going to generate a purchase requisition out to the vendor and the stock transport order across. So you can see here that purchase requisition is related across. So let's start MRP for this plant. Now, normally MRP could be just running in the background actually doing this for us. I'm running it manually so you can see the before and after results from the MRP run. Okay, good stuff. So now I've got two purchase recs. One is obviously for the goods to come in and the one is actually the stock transfer order. So one coming up, one going down, obviously equals zero. And we've got to now go and generate the purchase order, uh, which is this one, sorry. Uh, you'll notice here it's saying not yet specified as the vendor for this particular purchase order. It's because I'm gonna select a vendor for that in just a moment. And then we're gonna ship the goods out across. So just uh, back to our little diagram so we know where we're at. What we've done so far is obviously the planned independent requirements generated a demand and running MRP we've generated a purchase requisition. We're then going to generate the purchase order out to the store. Okay so let's go do that. So let me go back to my home page. What I'm going to do is if I go now to manage my purchase requisitions You'll see here I've got uh, all my purchase recs, but let me just filter that down a little bit to the ones that I'm playing with. So here you'll see that I've got, now I've got my purchase order and my stock transport order. How do I know it's a stock transport order? I can see that it's got a plant as the assigned supplier. Whereas in my purchase order, I've got a choice of uh, who do I actually want to supply it. I've got two potential sources. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the source for this uh, purchase requisition. And here I can see that the second, uh, well, it's actually supply number one, but it's second on the list, is the, the cheaper of the two. So I'm going to select that particular supplier. That's great. Now it's, see we can see the, the supplier is selected. And what I want to do next is I want to create that purchase order. So let me just... Uh, quickly show you what's happened there Go in here obviously we can see all the information about that purchase rec but uh, let's just take a look sorry just gonna have to filter that again probably shouldn't have clicked out okay so let's create the purchase order. so I select that click on create the purchase order and just select the line and we're creating a standard PO it's all good I'll submit that and they will generate a purchase order for me. It's given me the, uh, can the can the delivery date be met? That's fine. It's just a little bit of a lead time issue. Uh, and here we have the purchase order. So purchase order ending in uh, 10 is my purchase order out to the vendor, which is great. Now, of course, if we're using the Ariba network and things like that, that could have passed to the vendor and all those things. But in this particular case, I'm going to say that's all happened, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to seat that purchase order in. Now, before I purchase, that's before I go to seat the purchase order. Let me quickly show you the stock status at the moment, just to show that we don't have any. Um, so, let's go and just type in my material code, and you'll see that the material is set up in two plants: the hospital and the central procurement, and there is no stock anywhere at the moment. Okay, so to show that. So what I'm going to do is post a goods receipt for that purchase order. Now again I could do a search and all those things in here but I'm going to cheat in this case and just type in the purchase order number and again I could uh, add bits and pieces in here on delivery notes and all that kind of stuff if I want to but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say I'm going to receipt all seven of them and I'm going to generate them into this purchase sorry this storage location and when I post that what it's going to do because I've done the goods receipt it's going to say now that I've got seven in my storage location at the main 
plant location. So let's prove that point by just going back to the stock overview. So if I go into my stock overview, and again, pull up my material, here we go. So now I should be able to see I have my seven sitting in the plant, and I've only got one storage location, so that's where they're sitting in that location. Everything's good. Okay, so now that um, I've got the stock, I now need to fulfill my, my stock transport order across to the plant. Excuse me, let me just go back to my diagram. So now, of course, I need to generate this movement across. Again, this may happen automatically in the real world. I'm just showing you this uh, bit by bit as we go. So let me go back to manage purchase requisitions because the, the STO is still in a requisition status at the moment. And here he is. Again, you can see the vendor is assigned as a, a supplier. Now, one thing I've got to do here is I just need to, when I create my purchase order, I've got to tell it what type of purchase order it is that I'm generating. So it may give me some little errors here, which is okay. So I just need to make sure that is a stock transport order. And select that and then hit submit. And if everything goes to plan, it should generate a stock transport order STO purchase order for me. So here we can see now it's 5111. Uh, That's my uh, my stock transport order. Now what I've got to do next is I've got to pick it, pack it and dispatch it out of the sending site. So this is where I now need to, obviously I've done the goods receipt, I now need to goods issue it into stock in transit. So let's do that now. Now this is where I'm going to show you a couple of, um, of the older style screens. So what we're going to do is we're going to go across to here. I'm going to look at my purchase orders due for delivery. So this is going to open an old uh, SAP GUI screen, but we're in the Fury view. So you can see from an end user point of view, it doesn't look too different. Uh, it's not a Fury app, it's still a, it's an SAP transaction. So let me put in my purchase order number. Again, I could search for it as before, and you'll see the system still tries to search. Okay, so let's click on Execute. And what that will do now is show me my uh, purchase order, and I just need to turn that into a delivery and if I just quickly select it so again a bit of an older looking screen that's okay let's just show the delivery number there um, so now this could send this down to a picking device or anything else used to actually select and uh, pick the goods out of stock so of course we've done the goods receipt before so now I'm going to do the, um, the goods issue so let me do that very quickly by selecting how many I'm going to pick. So I'll go into my picking and I'm going to say I'm going to pick all seven of them. And I'm going to post goods issue for that from here. So what that will then do is it will generate, that's actually giving me a little printout of the uh, of the delivery note too, but I'm not really interested in that right now. Um, so what that's now done is it's picked it and moved the stock into what we call stock in transit. So you can see here, Obviously, in our diagram, it's now sitting between the two plants, 1710 and 1720. To show that in the system, let's go back to my stock overview page, and we should now be able to see that sitting in transit. So let's take a look. It would help if I continue to type. Thank you. Here it is. So we should be able to see my seven now sitting in stock in transit. So basically it's not sitting in the storage location as it was before. It's sitting in stock in transit. What I'm going to do is go to seat it and it's going to hit this uh, location here. So let's do that now. So I'm going to now be in the, um, the receiving location. I'm going to post goods receipt for the purchase order, which is basically the, uh, the stock transport order going through. So that's my stock transport order for my seven. Obviously I can see where it's come from and all those things if I want to. But in this case, I'm gonna just very quickly say I want it in this particular storage location and I'm gonna post that stock. And what will happen is of course, it gives me a material document. It's posted that into stock, which is great. Let's go back to my stock view again. And when I go into my stock view, what it will do is show me that it is available for me to use. So here it is now sitting in my storage location in the ultimate receiving site. Now what we're going to do next is we're actually going to get rid of this stock because um, let's say we've gone to use it, we may be consuming it uh, against the cost center or we may be 
uh, doing a little stock take on it or checking it. So what I'm going to do is I go to manage stock, whereas before we had to use the old MM, MMBE and all those. And uh, I can see an up arrow uh, for my different stock statuses. But in this case, I'm going to actually hit an up arrow, but I'm going to do a scrapping movement. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I'm going to scrap them all, all seven of them, and I'm going to settle it to a cost center, which in this case is my inventory management cost center. So of course this could be um, issuing to any cost center saying we've, we've actually used used the goods as such. So if I click on post, what's going to happen is obviously the material document is posted and we have no stock left. So again, just to prove that point, let's have a look at my stock register for that particular item. And we should find that we don't have any stock because of course now we have issued it out. So just to finish on the uh, the story there, basically, obviously the demand went across, we got a purchase order, did a good receipt for it, we issued it out from the central distribution, went into transit, it got goods receipted, and finally what happened was obviously it got consumed against the cost center. Actually, in my case, I scrapped it, but it could be against uh, any cost center for consumption. And that is the end of that demonstration. So what we've looked at there really is how we can use um, the different screens both from uh, some of the older type screens which are our SAP GUI screens and obviously the newer screens that we can use and jump between different transactions to post them in a very easy to use way.